This presentation is of some 6 by 13 centimeter glass transparencies that my grandfather took in the 20s and 30s. For the sake of the presentation, they have been transferred to 35 mm Before I start, a quick and brief introduction to the man himself. He was, frankly, the coolest guy. He was born in 1899, a total enthusiast. Officially, he was a lawyer, but his hobbies seemed to have played a far bigger part in his life. Climbing, rhododendrons, photography, filmmaking, tobogganing, carpentry and flying, to name but a few. A veritable playboy. Unfortunately, with so much going on in his life, it is no surprise that he was only really into stereoscopic photography for about 10 years. With Grandpa, there was always a new toy just around the corner that he'd move on to. The stereo phase of his life also coincided with the keen mountaineering phase, which is why the vast majority of these slides are mountaineering images. I shan't blabber on now. Let's start and I'll fill in some of the holes along the way. So not a particularly fascinating or not a particularly brilliant slide, but I wanted to include it as it is the first stereo photo he ever took, his mother's dogs, Mignon and Cinders. It was taken in 1921, so Grandpa would have been 22. I love this slide because it really encapsulates the age. 1922, when my grandfather was at Oxford University. These guys were the absolute dons of rowing. Both were in the Oxford Eight and winners of multiple races. Also fascinating to see their bodies when compared to the massive beefcakes like Matthew Pinsent, their modern day equivalents. I included this slide mainly on technical grounds. I'm intrigued by the blurriness of the middleman. Clearly this was shot on a fairly slow exposure. Yet the other rower in the background who is moving is pin sharp, which I don't quite understand. I also love all the shops in the background. So the climbing starts. This was my grandpa's younger brother, Hailey, on the gashed crag route in North Wales, Trefion, one of three mountains in the tree of the Tarsonodonia. Now this is the first slide that illustrates what is a recurring theme in these slides and a constant fascination to me. Just look at those clothes, sensational. Three-piece suit, plus fours, wool stockings, garters, cap, tie and a tie pin. It's all totally wonderful. And then the complete lack of safety equipment. But I'll talk more about that later. This is a great photo. This woman appears a lot in his climbing life. So casual, just look at her. With only a rope going down, she must be the lead climber. So if she falls, she falls twice the distance between her and the person below her. Again, a fabulous outfit. Another lovely image. The three of them having a rest and a smoke on the ledge during a climb. Again, just ropes tied round the waist. Not only was my grandfather a passionate climber, he was also passionate about introducing others into the game. In the notes he kept with his slides, this one was labelled as Rosemary and Dickie Reese on their first climb, Trefion, 1926. Now maybe it's because I'm terrified of heights and therefore detest climbing, but this looks like a monstrously difficult introduction into the sport. And then this slide was labelled as Rosemary and Dickie Reese enjoying their first climb. Frankly, they both look pretty miserable to me, cold, scared and wishing they were anywhere else other than stuck halfway up this blooming mountain. However, fear not, they have made it. Here they are on top of the hill. It's not a great slide, but I wanted to show you that they had made it safely to the top. Another great photo. Far more relaxed than the first timers. Again, I love the outfit and the casual safety equipment. So this is one of my favourite slides, for many reasons. It's a phenomenal shot, but mainly because it's of my grandpa, the man himself, looking so goddamn amazingly cool and handsome. Filthy clothes, rough ropes. In his hand there's a slide or something, maybe it's a filter, I'm not sure what. My great uncle, who my father, who was also a very keen climber, tells me was a dreadful climber, but frankly he looks like he's doing pretty well to me. Now it's come up in other slides, but this is one of the best examples, the astonishing depth of field. The rock in the foreground is sharp, as is the truck on the road in the far distance. All of these climbing shots would have had to be taken handheld. I've used his non-stereo plate camera, which is a very similar piece of kit, and it's very unwieldy. So I'm thinking that any exposure less than 125th of a second would be tricky. I guess it could have been a very bright day, but I'm interested to know what kind of speed stocks were available in those days. This is the same guy as we saw earlier in the full three-piece suit, maintaining his same sartorial excellence, only this time taking the coolness one step further by climbing with a cigarette in his hand. An astonishing shot, fantastic 3D, an awesome composition. I first showed these slides in Coventry in January 2005 in their original 6x13 format. I remember being very disappointed at the quality of this slide. You tend not to see the imperfections when viewing on a taxi photo. However, one of the bonuses of transferring these slides onto 35mm is that it is possible, in the process, to clean up the images. 
and I'm very grateful to Bob Aldridge for all the fabulous work he has done on these slides and to Colin Clay for mounting them all. I've included this because I think it shows what a good subject climbing is for stereo photography because very often you have these ropes coming into the foreground attached to my grandfather, the photographer, which immediately heighten the stereo effect. Also, you often have people in the background. Not a great slide, but I wanted to include it because of the strong sepia tint, which I think is interesting. The man standing up is Huey Irvine. He's the brother of the Irvine who was killed with Mallory on Everest, which shows that my grandfather was hanging out with the climbing glitterati. Nobody knows if they ever got to the top. This photo was taken in 1924. Sherpa Tenzin and Edmund Hillary didn't make it until 1953, on the day of the Queen's coronation. I love the contrast and the detail. The clothes remind me of those photos of Midwest workers in the USA during the Depression. I'm not sure if any of you have any interest or knowledge on climbing, but this is the monolith crack in Snowdonia, which is a famous chimney ascent amongst the climbing fraternity. So here's our lady climber again. A fabulous photo, so relaxed and poised, like a ballet dancer standing on the cleft of the rock in her little pointy shoes. She's traversing here, another very dangerous maneuver. Normally when you're climbing, unless you are the lead, you have a rope heading straight up, so all you'd fall is the slack in the rope. Yet when you're traversing, you of course swing like a pendulum all the way down until you are below the person to whom you're attached. Knowing that, it's amazing to see how relaxed she is. What a girl. A stunning photo. The contrast and light are perfect. This great view is taken in North Wales. So now we head abroad for some climbing. This is my great grandpa, the photographer's father, asleep on a boat. I love this image, with a couple snogging in the background. It reminds me of a new wave French movie, or a Cartier-Bresson photograph. And what a great moustache on my great grandfather. This is the same man in a square in France. The village is called monetier les bains a small village in a region known as the Serre Chevalier in the French Alps. I love the dirt tracks and the cafes in the background. These guys are on the Saillant Glacier in Mont Blanc in France. Again, fabulous clothes and total lack of kit. The modern equivalent photo would contain hordes of rucksacks, pickaxes, crampons and tons of other special equipment. Yet yeah, here these guys are and they're just wearing their city hats. The same gang at dinner. I really love this slide. It's got real atmosphere and time. Some lovely little cafe in a small alpine village with five explorers sitting around sharing their stories. A great slide with beautiful light taken above Fionne in Switzerland in 1927. This is Joseph Knubel, an Austrian guide. I love this slide. The chat amongst explorers in the background, the telescope. This slide would have been taken in Chamonix near Mont Blanc. The climbers would have arranged to meet Joseph Knubel here. I also like the fact that never in a million years did Joseph Knubel imagine that 80 years later, a bunch of stereoscopic fanatics in England would be looking at a picture of him. This is on the Col Supérieur du Plan in Mont Blanc. It was taken in 1927. This slide was damaged. But again, another advantage of the transfer to the 35mm is that slides like this can be repaired. Climbing the Nantillon Glacier in Chamonix. The lumps are seracs, which are prone to break off at any time. They are traversing across to the rockier bit in the background, which is where they will continue their ascent. I looked this up on the internet, and the climb was classified as very difficult by the Chamonix Climbing Association. Again, I love the idea that even in this dangerous situation, my grandfather was inclined to spend two minutes taking a stereo slide of the image. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my grandpa had an amazing ability to get everyone and anyone onto a mountain. His passion was infectious and his persuasion was persistent. And this poor, slightly unsuspecting looking recruit is in fact his nanny, who would have looked after him when he was a kid. What I love most is the fact that she is climbing in a long skirt. Look at the cliff and the drop, it's unbelievable. I like these next two slides because again they encapsulate the time so well. And also I'm relieved that my grandfather wasn't such a climbing fanatic that he didn't have time for the ladies. This is a lady called Catherine on a beach in Brittany in France. She was my grandfather's girlfriend for a long time. A close-up of the same woman, a beautiful image. Both these images are quite sexy, I think. I only mention that because of the next slide. This terrifying woman is Catherine's chaperone, who clearly looks very disgruntled about this dashing young man taking sexy pictures of her charge. Frankly, with her about, it's no wonder the relationship didn't last. This image was taken in Snowdonia. The woman sitting in the front, looking down, is my great aunt Ursula. I've no idea who the rest of the people are, or the relationships between them, but I think it's a beautiful picture. I love the way everyone looks. It's timeless. I knew this woman. She was tiny, less than five foot, and very gutsy. Just look at the situation she is in, and the kit she is wearing. Again, maybe it's my fear of the whole climbing game, but frankly, it looks insane. 
I've included this slide because of the spontaneity of the shot. As I've already mentioned, I've used my grandfather's non-stereo plate camera, and it is a really fiddly piece of kit, as I'm sure many of you know. So, spontaneity is very hard to achieve. I guess if you use the camera a lot, and that's all you're used to, you can get pretty quick. But I still find this photo pretty amazing, to get it that quickly. Or, maybe his friend was just happy to pose for him. This is Catherine again, on a two-man bob, that would have gone down the bob run. As well as being a keen mountaineer, my grandfather was also a passionate tobogganist and was president of the St. Moritz Tobogganing Club for many years. This photograph was taken in Eskdale in the Lake District in 1930. It's a great photo and I love her mad hair. I've included this slide with shameless pride of my deliciously cool grandpa. This is my granny on the beach in Anglesey in North Wales, 1933. They got married the same year. My grandmother again. The image isn't quite sharp. But I've included it because I love the fact she has climbed some mountain in Snowdonia in a tie, skirt and her best shoes. This is an air show in White Waltham, just outside Maidenhead, one of the oldest airfields in the UK and still in operation to this day. My grandfather worked here for most of the war at the ATA. Then he became part owner of a flying club here and this is where he kept his plane after the war. This is my father next to my grandfather's plane, looking very proud to be holding his father's flying case. This is my dad and uncle outside my grandfather's house in Gloucestershire. It's the cutest image. I've included it because it completes the generational picture. I like the idea that all four generations have come under the umbrella of stereoscopy. My great-grandfather and my father as the subjects. My grandfather and me as the photographers. The reason I put this slide last in my presentation is twofold. Firstly, it's perhaps my favourite, the man himself doing what he loved but also it signifies the end of his stereo photography phase. Very soon after this slide was taken, he discovered the moving image and then became a fanatical Super 8mm and 16mm filmmaker. In fact, I still use his beautiful Bewley Super 8 camera to this day. It's still considered the best camera ever made. Because he always did everything to the max, he had a special title sequence constructed, a la Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer or Miramax, which he spliced in front of all his movies, and this image was the key element to that title sequence. So, despite this being one of the last stereo shots he took, it does live on in non-stereo format in all the films he made. And that's it. I hope some of these images were of interest to you. Just to finish, I'd like to say how much it would mean to my grandfather that his slides were being enjoyed by enthusiasts 70 years after he took them. It really is a very wonderful and beautiful thing. So thank you all, from me and from him, for listening. <laughs>